Good afternoon everyone. I'm just here wanting to discuss one of my paintings that I finished um, probably a few months ago now around early January, February. Um, it's called The Three Marys and it was really inspired um, mainly by a book by a, a feminist theologian called Megan Watterson and it was about Mary Magdalene. And in the book, um, she unpacks a lot of the, the Gnostic Gospels and um, also Mary Magdalene herself wrote a Gospel and an account of Jesus. And it was all about essentially um, living out your humanity, um, not separating your humanity from your spiritual um, world, that they're, they're both intertwined. I mean, m many other things that she, she talked about, but yeah, it was a really captivating book. And um she very much associates uh, the Magdalene with the colour red. So I made sure that that was my, uh, I guess, main colour that really, the other colours are supportive colours, but this colour is, is the one that um, gives the, I've, overall you sort of feel like it's a red painting. Um, anyway, so the reason why I chose, um, I latched onto the idea of the three Marys was, there, there's a couple, a couple of different tales about three Marys. Like one is that they had a pilgrimage and went to France, and that was with the Mary Magdalene and uh, Mary Salome. But um, also, the three Marys in medieval times are associated with, um, and in, in the biblical accounts too, being with Jesus at the resurrection and the crucifixion. So both those really pivotal moments. Um, just being there and being the first ones to sort of see the resurrection as well and eyewitnesses, like very powerful eyewitnesses of that. So I, um, I've, I've wanted to put, definitely put um, Mother Mary in there as well. So on the left hand, um, on the, well, my left hand side anyway, um, we've got Mary Salome and um, so she was one of Jesus' disciples that you really don't hear very much about. Mary Magdalene on this side and in the middle of course we've got um, Mother Mary you can see with um, her at the Immaculate Heart which is an iconic kind of symbol of um, of her life journey of her spirituality being that it's pierced um, that she was pierced with sorrows and um, I'm just going to sort of meander around the painting with this the symbolic elements because there's quite a few um, and we'll see where it leads. So I've got the heart there, which is very powerful. You often see, you know, a lot of the Catholic images of Mary with her hand up like that and um, just showing that that immaculate heart through a robe and it's very symbolic. In mine, um, I chose, I don't think it was a mistake, but just kind of worked, was five roses. And, I mean, roses in themselves, are, especially pink roses, are very much a symbol of, of purity and, um, and faith. But the number five is a very significant number as well. Like, um, it's very much the number of change, embracing change, but also, I think, of that um, dynamic energy because five is associated with the fifth chakra, which is your throat chakra. So I think it's quite poetic that it's on her heart so out of the abundance of your heart the mouth speaks and that's how I kind of see the nature of Mary I think that she um, she spoke sort of her love like you can see there's some prayers that she's written in the scriptures and everything that are so beautiful so number five and also um, there was five stones that David picked up to slay Goliath so there's that sort of real sense of the power of our words and also the, the, the sacredness of, of them and just um, especially when they come out of our heart, our heart space, which is our true space, you know what I mean? Like our, um, who we actually, you know, there, there's, there's a truth when you're talking from your heart that's associated with truth. Um, around her head I've got actually 13 roses. So... 13 is a very, is a, associated with a feminine number and also um, meaning intuition. So it's a very powerful number when you look into numerology as well. So I've got her there. So the two 
canaries on the either side of her. Uh, they both got um, marigolds in their hair, and I love marigolds. They um, they're named after in some cultures Mary's gold. I suppose in our culture, because we call them marigolds. Um, but they are very much associated with the sun and that dynamic energy. And um, I think here, just with it being there, sort of um, on their head, it's like that that feeling of of hope and um, especially when you think of the gospel stories like the hope coming out of something really dark and you know that sort of sense of newness and sense of birth um, it's very present in the gospel stories so we've got that there as well as that we've got some irises and irises apart from being the greek goddess iris who traveled on a rainbow and i love that idea um, they're also a symbol of um, wisdom and hope and trust and those three words like um, and valor as well I think as well so having that sort of courage and hope in the things that you believe in so there's a flower um, symbolism in there just as an overall um, style I guess when I paint like this I very much draw from the icons like the the real stylized religious imagery like I've got a couple in my in my kitchen of um, Jesus and like an angel and they're so stylized and they, they like from the 50s like they're really um, beautiful and I love I love those images so much um, but I also really love um, renaissance artists like you know when you see people in the floating robes and everyone's flying in different directions and you know none of it's it's kind of realistic to the sense that you know that they, they look real people but they, they don't look like real people because they, they've been stylized so I've kind of carried that through with my faces as well like they're not hyper realistic they're just quite stylized um, which means that they are representative of the whole they represent parts of all of us we can relate to them in that way they're not they're a piece of all of us but so I started the canvas off with like this heart shape and it's paper it's actually paper and then in the middle it's like modeling paste but it's a heart shape and you can't see it now which is really funny and it, it makes me think that like I'm still glad that it's in there like it was part of the process and it kind of just the fact that it's there is what matters it doesn't matter that you can't see it now kind of a thing so um, yeah for me it's such a, a, a big um, lesson I guess of how it's not really always about the final product it's about what we you know how we go about it what we're learning we're, we're learning all the time through what we create and how, what becomes of it is really out of your hands like you don't really know what's going to become of anything that you create so that heart shape is there so I know I know that 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 was my way of sort of processing this whole um, the images and everything that was swirling around in my my mind at the time so I think I've spoken enough about it so we've talked about the red and the colors um, they really just emerge a lot of it's quite intuitive when I paint but um, it is very good for me throat chakra as well um, to talk about my art and I'd encourage you to do the same like whatever you do to create give yourself the space and the honor to to articulate what you're wanting to create whether it's in words or um, whether you're a painter whatever way you create and hopefully you've gotten a little bit out of this um, the symbolism and um, I'll wish you a very good afternoon and have a lovely rest of your evening or rest of your day with whatever you're up to. God bless. Bye.